Forgiveness is not something that you do because they're okay and it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I learned that it's something you do because you don't want the pain of your past to control the promise of your future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's what was happening, is the past was literally controlling mm -hmm. my future. I saw everything through the lens of what happened to me. It didn't matter how good it was. Yeah. I saw it through the lens of what happened to me. And I think, I think that's the challenge, though, is recognizing that what happened to you can only be rectified by making the decision to forgive the people that did it. My mom and my dad had been married for 13 years before she was pregnant, she got pregnant with me. And um, she was actually angry because she didn't want to have children. She came from a really large family. They were very, very poor. And she said that she never wanted to have kids. But my dad was so excited. Like he wanted to have children um, from the moment they got married. And six months into her pregnancy, um, he started to have some stomach pain. And so he went to the doctor just to find out what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he ended up getting diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer. Mm -hmm. And they gave him six months to live. And um, I remember uh, my aunt telling me that um, he just was so crushed. I mean, as you can imagine, waiting 13 years to have a child. And yeah. now you're going to finally have a child. And, right. and you're probably not going to see them. Mm. go to school. And so um, he lived up until about a month uh, shy of my second birthday. But um, my mom, who has some significant mental illness, um, mm. she was just really unstable. And he was worried that should something happen to him, that I would grow up in a very unstable situation. And so after he passed, my mom actually moved us to Florida. Um, I grew up in New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey. Moved us to Florida, following after a guy she barely knew. And um, I think they broke up like shortly after we got there. I was like literally like two, so I was young. But uh, a parade of men came in and out of our life over the next two years. And by the time I was four, she met a guy who became her live-in boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll never forget, her sister passed away and I was almost five years old. And this guy, I just knew something was wrong with him. Like he would hold me close to his body, too tight for too long. And I just, I just never felt safe around him. And so mm. when her sister passed away, um, she told me that she had to go back to New Jersey. And she was like, I'm going to leave you with him for just a few days. Oh, my gosh. And I said to her, I was like, no, mommy, please take me with you. I won't right. ask for anything. I'll be good. Um, but she couldn't afford another plane ticket. So she left me with him. And that night, I locked my bedroom door because, I mean, I'm only five. But I knew I was not Jesus. safe with him. Yeah. And um, he used a straightened wire hanger to pick the lock. And he came in the room that night and violated me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, even now, like the smell of beer yeah. on someone's breath, yeah. Yeah. it takes me back to that moment. Mm -hmm. And for several years um, after that happened, he continued to abuse me. And after he would do it, he would always say, you better not tell your mom or else she'll get rid of you because she doesn't want you anyway. And I figured in my little mind, I was like, well, she must be saying that she doesn't want me because, you know, how would he know this? He, he's five. Yeah. yeah, I was five. And so I never, I didn't yeah. say anything until I was about seven years old when I finally told my mom, because it was just, it got to the point where I just, I didn't want to go home. I was feeling sick. Yep. And she had him arrested. And I was so excited. I was glad that he was out of the house and mm. I thought I was safe. Uh, but on the day of his release, she took me with her um, to the jail to pick him up. Yes. And she brought him back home and um, he continued to violate me routinely because at that point he knew, like he basically had free access because right. she took him back. Right. And my mom was physically abusive while he was sexually abusive. And I would act out in school because there was so much chaos at home. I couldn't right. focus. Right. And so I would get punished at school for acting out at school. And I, at nine years old, I decided to drink laundry detergent because I wanted to end my life. I had saw a TV program where a toddler died from drinking bleach. Oh, and I thought God. that would, would end it. Um, but I just ended up getting really sick. And uh, two years after that, I, my mom choked me to the point where I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die and I lived, but I was so hopeless and helpless that I decided I wanted to end my life. And so I, I took a butcher knife, slit both of my wrists. Um, I still have a scar on my left wrist from when it happened. And I didn't die, but... There was something in me that was so angry yeah. and so bitter yeah. that um, I carried that into my adulthood. Like I, yeah. I had this bitterness and 
And wow. God blessed. I was so successful in school. I was able to channel that trauma into success, but it was still there to the point where I would, I would lash out at my husband and I would just be really short with people. And I got to a place where my success took me so far, but I was so empty and so broken that I knew something was wrong. Mm. And God began to show me just through different situations that there was ground that needed to be reclaimed because yeah. my mother was still affecting me. Her boyfriend was still affecting me. And I said, Lord, what is it that I need to do? And God showed me that there was, there was like a, a tethering that had happened to where I did not have the ability to let it go yeah. because I kept blaming them for what happened. I had a great life by that point. Yeah. Family that loved me, husband that loved me, but I was so tethered to the pain of my past that I could not enjoy the life that God had created. And I literally had to learn that the only way you can get free from that pain is you have to let the people who hurt you go. Now, the only way to do that is to forgive. Yeah. And forgiveness is not something that you do because they're okay and it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I learned that it's something you do because you don't want the pain of your past to control the promise of your future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's what was happening, is the past was literally controlling my future. I saw everything through the lens of what happened to me. It didn't matter how good it was. Yeah. I saw it through the lens of what happened to me. And I think, I think that's the challenge, though, is recognizing that what happened to you can only be rectified by making the decision to forgive the people that did it. The only way we can forgive is through the Spirit of Jesus. You may not feel it, you may not, you know, sense it, but the thing, the act of forgiveness is for you. And it releases that person to the hand of justice and mercy, which is the Lord. And so God knows, and He's not slow. He's not slow with His, with the way He does justice, but believe me, He will have it. And I'm just, I just want to be a help to you for some of you that have been brewing over memories, brewing over things, stewing into, you know, some of these, you know, scenarios that happened years ago. And yet when you talk about it, it feels like it just happened yesterday. That's the stuff I'm talking about. My encouragement to you is to forgive, to release it. You'll be better for it. You, it, you won't buy yourself more time if you keep thinking on it, keep ruminating on it, keep holding on to it. You're, you're poisoning yourself. You know, you're wishing death on someone when actually death is happening to you in your own inside, your mentality, your heart, your family, your kids are tired of hearing about it. Your, your husband is tired of you, you know, um, spilling the beans over and over again, reliving the trauma. It gets tiresome and you're the only one living in that, stuck in that mode, stuck in that place, and you'll never be free from it until you forgive. I'm just telling you for your own benefit, just please help. I'm, I'm helping a sister out, help, helping a brother out. Just release them. I promise you, you'll be better for it. Did either of them, either your mother or her boyfriend, did either of them ever ask for forgiveness? <laughs> so um, they didn't ask for forgiveness. Um, my mom told me in her way, this is literally what she said. She said, you know, I, I didn't mean for it to happen, but, you know, you, you wanted a whole lot of stuff. And so, you know, I had to have him in the house so that he could help pay for, for stuff that you wanted. Mm. She told me another time, she said, um, this, this, I know it was, it was bad and it shouldn't have happened, but it wouldn't have happened if you would have just kept your legs closed. Mm. So it's it your fault and it's your oh, yeah. fault. It was my fault and it was my fault. And I carried that anger. I carried that identity with me. I mean, not only did he basically say that it was my fault, she said it was my fault. I carried it with me to the point where I was like, I'm defective. Something mm -hmm. is wrong yeah. with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No matter where my name sits on an org chart, I don't deserve mm -hmm. to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Mm -hmm. Self-loathing, too. Yes. That's a yeah. terrible yeah. thing. Yeah. And I, I got to a place in God, I mean, literally like tears, snot bubbles, all of that, <laughs> yeah. where I was like, Lord, I cannot go on like this. Yeah. I cannot go on like this where this situation is literally controlling how I see everything in my life. Yeah. And God told me, God said, you have to forgive them. How okay. do you even begin? Yeah. How do you start <laughs> that? How did that look for you? Because I know that God in His great mercy yep. gives us the strength to do that. Yep. I, I love, I listen, uh, Stephen Furtick's one of my favorite pe preachers, and he talked about um, 
forgiveness in God, Jesus and his his grace and his mercy when he said to forgive 70 times seven Mm -hmm. wasn't for that person just to keep violating. He said, it might take you 70 times seven times a day to forgive. Yes. And, and I believe we do that in faith, just like we receive our salvation. We forgive in faith. Mm -hmm. Is that how it worked for you? Do you still at times say, God, I've just released them and I forgive them. Do you still do that? So I think the way it worked for me is interesting. There is so much power in our testimony. Yeah. Um, I was in college, and this is when it became full circle. I was in college, and uh, my roommate mm. had been raped. And I found out about it, and I was talking to her about it. And I said to her, because she was crying, I said, I understand. And she said, how can you possibly understand? How can you possibly understand? And I began to share my story with her. Mm. And... Through that, there was like a a softness that happened Mm -hmm. that I realized, number one, what happened, I really, I would prefer that it didn't happen, but at the end of the day, it did. And because it happened in that moment, I was able to be a minister to this person. Yeah, the aha you too moment. That's really what became the power for me to choose forgiveness is when I realized, like Joseph, I mean, my God, Joseph, his brothers literally put him in slavery, right? Right. But if it wasn't for what they did, he would not have eventually become the prime minister of Egypt and been able to save his entire nation. Um, I had to realize that, you know what? It sucked. But because it happened, Mm -hmm. I am now able to be a minister to others who are in bondage. And so I'm I'm grateful for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the people who hurt me because I know hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. But it happened because God intended to use it. We place so much stock in apologies. Uh, When somebody hurts us, you know, we really want to hear them say, I'm sorry, but there's really no power in an apology. I mean, if you think about it, uh, we apologize because we're socially conditioned to do so, even as a child, right? So we, we hurt something, we broke something, and we're told, say you're sorry. And so we learn to say we're sorry when many times we're not. I think that we have to recognize that there is no inherent power in an apology to heal what hurts. And whether a person ever asks for forgiveness or not, we have the power to forgive them. Because we have to understand, forgiveness is not about them. It's about us. It's the power that we have to essentially break the past away from our future. It's the power we have to reclaim ownership over our destiny and basically say, listen, what happened should not have happened and I wish it didn't happen, but I forgive you because I'm not going to allow that to control the rest of my life. That's the redemptive power of Christ. Yeah. 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 I and mean, that's yeah. stunning, absolutely stunning. I hate that you went through that. Yeah. But I'm thinking of the number of women watching in yeah. and they've gone through something like that. And their question might become, God, where were you? Yep, did right. you? How did you deal with that of thinking, if you're sovereign and you're loving, why didn't you stop it? So I, I had an interesting situation. Um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. So I didn't know anything about God or the Bible or church. Like I had no means of comparison. Yeah. Um, my first time in church was when I was 11. Mm-hmm. And the preacher preached that day. I think it was out of Psalm 68. He said, God is a father to the fatherless. And when he said that, because I had always wanted my father, yeah. it like, yeah. it spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And I think from that moment is when I really started to study the word of God on my own. Mm-hmm. And I discovered my identity in the Bible. Mm-hmm. That The abuse didn't stop immediately. But I realized, wait a minute, there's a father in heaven. I, I look back now and I'm like, I should have died when I was nine. I should have died when I was 11. I should not be here. There was a God in heaven who was protecting me when I didn't even want anyone to protect me. I wanted to die. Right. Right. And so it isn't a question of why me. I'm, I, I've learned to release the why. Mm. Because I think That's why good. is such a toxic question, yeah. especially when there's no answer that can bring healing. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. Like if, it will if, never satisfy. No, yeah. if he said, oh, I did it because it happened to me, that doesn't make me yeah, feel better. No. Right. If my mom right. said, oh, I, did it, I let it happen because it happened to me, that doesn't make me feel better. Right. So I had to release why wow. and just accept what mm-hmm. and say, okay, God, mm-hmm. use this for your glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what he's done. Wow. So the ver- forgiveness process, how did it look like? A lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. And I also had to physically kind of separate myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, you know, what I've discovered about forgiveness, 
there's two sides to the coin. There's forgiveness and there's repentance, right? Mm -hmm. So the people that transgress against us, repentance is their path to reconciliation with us. Mm -hmm. My mother was not willing to repent. And therefore, she continued to perpetuate the pain. Mm -hmm. And so I had to physically separate myself. Yeah. But through prayer, like I pray for my mother every morning, wow. mm -hmm. every single morning. And yeah. that's made my heart tender yeah. to her. Um, discovering the fact that God's power is strong enough yeah. to break that, yeah. that, that brokenness. Yeah. Um, that's what really did it for me is prayer, studying the word of God, mm. being in a community of people yeah. who have been through the same mm -hmm. thing that's and right. we're strengthening yeah. each other. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's important. Don't isolate yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because once you isolate yourself, that's when the enemy is empowered to so speak true. lies to yep. you about how you're not worthy and that's this right. happened because you wanted it. Or yeah. um, I think it was getting in a community of people who were able to, to speak life to me that really made the difference. I, think, I like what you said about Stephen, that sometimes you have to do it 700 times a day or 490 oh, yeah. times right. a day. To me, you start where you are. Right. right. I had a friend who really betrayed me um, and it somehow because she was one of my best friends mm. and I trusted her, it cut so yep. much deeper. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And my first prayer of forgiveness was like, Lord, I forgive her, but you know I don't mean it. Yeah. And literally, yeah, that right. literally was my yeah. first prayer. I don't like her. Uh, and I don't yeah, like I her. I don't like give her. her a large boil in the middle of her face. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was not. A, but I, I knew, yeah. to me, it's like, here's my will and here's the will of God. And I wanted yeah. to drag my will in line with the will of God. Yeah. So I started where I was. That's but good. the interesting thing was, as I prayed and prayed every single mm -hmm. day, I found that by the end of a few months and a year, yeah. I was actually praying for her with tears rolling down my mm -hmm. face. That And interestingly enough, I saw her for the first time last week. Wow. Oh, really? And we hugged each other. Wow. wow. See, see the goodness of God. When, when God says we need to forgive, it's not for them, no, it's, it's for, for us. us. Yeah. yeah. And what us. He can yeah. do on the inside of us and Him showing His mercy and Himself in such a beautiful way to us. And I know sometimes that is so hard because... You can say, I'm, there have been times I have said, God, I forgive, but it's out of such pain. Oh, yeah. And well, you yeah. know my heart. Right. Right. My heart is as black as this <laughs> Bible, you know, <laughs> and you know that. Mm -hmm. But I am going to pray right. for them. And God all of a sudden just works yeah. His oh, gracious goodness mm -hmm. yeah. on us. And we get to see Him in such a beautiful way and all his ways are so beautiful he not everything is good but he takes all of our yeah, mess yeah. Mm -hmm. he takes Amazing. everything that was Gives horrible us and he us. makes yes. it good for us yes you know that's just knowing jesus that's just the life we live yeah. life is not fair but forgiveness is god's gift to us to live in a world that's not fair we get to take that offense and we get to put it at the foot of the cross. Now, is it great if we're able to go to that person and if they own it, and if they ask for forgiveness, that's wonderful. But you don't have to wait for that. It might not even be safe for you to be in relationship again with that person. But I want you to know that Christ wants you to be free. Someone said, and I couldn't remember who or I'd credit them, that when we refuse to forgive, it's like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. You don't have to live in that cage anymore. I think, you know, we romanticize forgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've watched one too many Hallmark movies, oh, to be quite it's honest. It's hard, right? It's, it's hard. you know, there's a script, it's done in yeah. two hours, there's yeah. a tragedy a climax, yeah. the yeah. end. Yeah. We've watched one too many Disney movies, you know, yeah. like all it, it's- mm -hmm. It's all like the, the Little Mermaid, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, they live happily ever after. No, not mm -hmm. everybody lives happily yeah. ever yeah. after. And so for forgiveness, it, especially for my life, it was the nitty gritty of, you know, from from word on paper to real life. Like, mm -hmm. how does that happen? Right, yes. And so for people that suffer trauma, you know, just inner healing stuff, like it's still in in the in the workings or the makings, like in the in the showroom floor where all the bits and parts of the car mm -hmm. are all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you're like, can I ever recover this? Yeah. I'm here to say yes. Yeah. You can. Yeah. However, 
It's the tough work of <clears throat> forgiveness. Yeah. It's work. Yeah, forgiveness absolutely. is work. And so for me, what it looked like, it was after my, you know, getting married, after having my four babies, mm-hmm. having this moment of like I imploded at the age of 23 and walking through healing in my marriage. It's marriage is not like the climax of life. It's no. like another layer, <laughs> another process that you invite to process you, right? Mm-hmm. So I I distinctly remember, you know, just having my kids at my mom's home. Now, this is my mom, my biological mom, and then my stepdad. Now, he was the abuser. So I'm at the home. My kids never wanted them to stay there, but I would come and bring the kids so my mom would see them. And it was a moment where my daughter started running down the hallway into, like, the lights weren't on, and something just triggered. I swept my kids up left and I was like, I, I can't do this. Wow. Mm-hmm. This is I this is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy town. I love my mom, but I can't I yeah. can't coexist yep. with this that's unresolved yeah. right. and me trying to keep Act like pushing it's okay. forward, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So um I remember I, I spoke with my husband. My hus- my husband said, Are you are you ready to do this? And I said yes. So I made an appointment with my mom, my stepdad. So we were in the living room, you know, like the furniture had plastic coverings and everything, you know, the Latina yeah, version. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> no, no stains on the carpet, no stains on the couches, all right? So we're sitting there, and I started off the conversation with my mom and my stepdad, and he was in a wheelchair going through dialysis. And I don't, I don't want to expose him in such a way where it's demeaning and dishonoring of my mom, but at the same time, I needed to do this. Yeah. So my husband started off the conversation. I looked to my stepdad and I said, you know, you did this to me. And all of a sudden my mom's, you know, like mm. just the negative impact of news falling on you, knowing that it has happened, that it is true. Yeah, knowing it's true. Like it's yeah. it, it's a, it's different. Yeah. So when the news fell on her, seeing my mom crumble, seeing my stepdad all of a sudden straighten up and say, "You've ruined my life." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I I paused. My husband stepped in. He goes, "Do you understand what what she just said? You've abused her, and you're you're refusing to admit it." Yeah. He just sat there quietly. And I continued and I said, I forgive you. I don't need an apology from you, Mm -hmm. but I forgive you. And so all of a sudden it felt like this, this weight was lifted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dignity and self-respect all in a moment. Mm. Yes. It's like, I don't want, I don't want to even use, I'm taking my power back because I have no power. Rising up in Christ. It's, it's, it's. It's showing darkness and bringing it into the light yeah. Yeah. and that I'm choosing God's word, whether I feel it or don't, right. I'm choosing God's yes. word. And so I'm holding God's word and I'm like, you know what? I don't hold you responsible anymore. I leave you in the hands of Jesus. Mm. And wow. so I walked out of that place. My husband, he felt he was so proud of me at the same time, <laughs> sad at the same time, wants to hurt somebody. Absolutely. Okay. All of that. Absolutely. <laughs> and, all of that. But the but the whole the whole end of this is that for those of us who feel so fragmented, so feel like we can't get over it, like I'm here to tell you, like it's there is a process, mm-hmm. there is a coming of the minds, yeah. meeting of the minds. Yeah. And you come to grips with the honest conversation. You know, whether your abuser, abu- you know, who abused you, doesn't even ask for forgiveness, yep. yeah. doesn't even say, I'm sorry, yep. doesn't, you know, maybe, you know, railroads you and tells you to be quiet and yep. never address the issue mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. But um, I left that place different. Yeah. I felt like I met Jesus there, like a, another part of, of like the weapons of warfare were added to my like oh, yes. arsenal. It's like, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. I, I yes. got this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that is what, that's what the Lord did in my life. Wow. So but and now I'm living a blessed life because yes. even though it, forgiveness doesn't give proof, but it, it does release you. It's yes. like having a piano on, you know, dangling on the other side of the building and you're tied at the other end. You know, it's going to either pull you or you're just going to release it. Yeah. So like I you took that territory back. You took that piece of your soul back. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's like sometimes forgiveness is just gritty. You have to. So God, I pray right now 
for those who are watching, for those who are listening and they're saying that, you know what, the ability to forgive is beyond my capacity. It's beyond my strength. God, I pray that your grace would just be in the hearts of those people. I pray, Lord, that you would help them to recognize that forgiveness is a gift that we give to ourselves so that we can actually step into the future without the baggage from the past. I pray, God, for them, but I also pray that you will make their hearts tender to the person who hurt them so deeply, even that person who has never asked for forgiveness, that person who is indignant, that person who even blames them for what they did. My prayer, God, is that you would help them to become tender to that person because only through tenderness will they actually experience freedom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.